Hey everybody, this is Rick Riordan, and I'm excited to be here today to talk about the new TV series, Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I've gotten some fan questions from social media here, so let's see what's on your mind. First question, what's something that you didn't get to explore much in the books, but is going to be in the show that you're excited for? Oh, so many wonderful things. But I have to say one of the most exciting things for me is to see some backstory about some of the characters, even if Percy's not on the screen at the moment. That's the beauty of doing something from multiple points of view rather than just being in Percy's head. For instance, we get to go to a flashback and see Sally and Poseidon, Percy's parents, and how their relationship works and how it all started. And that's a really beautiful love story. Which weapon would you choose to go on a mission? Riptide, Annabeth's dagger, or Grover's flute? Well, they all have their advantages. Um, I don't play the pan pipes, so I don't know that that would help me very much. Uh, Annabeth's dagger is a weapon that is really for a warrior who has incredible skills because you have to get up close and personal when you're fighting with a dagger. I don't think I could use it as well as Annabeth could. So I'm going to have to, by default, say Riptide. Plus, I mean, come on, having a ballpoint pen that turns into a sword on command, that's pretty cool. Next question, what is your favorite scene that you got to adapt from the books to the show that didn't happen in the movies? There again are quite a few. I'm gonna have to say the water ride um, that Ares sends our heroes to. If you've read the books, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the books, whew, you're in for a treat because that is an incredible scene. I love it. Did anyone in the Riordan family get to make a cameo in the upcoming Percy Jackson TV series? Why, yes, uh, both Becky and I, Becky, my wife, my, my fellow executive producer, and I, made cameos of one sort or another. Unfortunately, I don't think Becky's cameo made it into the final cut, but mine did. I'll have to tell you what Becky's was at another time, maybe after the season airs. You will, however, see me. You won't see me for very long. Blink and you'll miss it, but I am in there. Next question, how do you pick out names for your characters? You know, sometimes they just come to me, like uh, Percy Jackson. Why Percy Jackson? Well, Percy is short for Perseus, okay, but Jackson, why? I don't know, it just sounded good. Annabeth, when I wrote the character Annabeth Chase, I had never known anyone, never heard the word Annabeth before. It just kind of came to me and it seemed like a really cool, name and so I decided yeah that's going to be our, our main heroine and uh, Grover I'm not sure I guess I watched too much Sesame Street as a kid uh, sometimes however I do name characters after former students of mine I was a middle school teacher for a long time like Charles Beckendorf that's a former student of mine Travis and Connor Stoll former students the list goes on Mrs. Dodds who turns into the Fury She's a former colleague of mine who taught at my school, and uh, she kind of liked being a Fury because now all the kids are scared of her. Next question, do you like blue food? Honestly, I'm not sure that I've had much blue food in my life. Uh, I like blueberry muffins, if that counts. The, the whole thing about the blue food came from this weird fact about myself that I found out years and years ago, that when I'm stressed, I eat orange food. I have no idea why, but if I look down at my desk and I've got an orange soda and Cheetos, I know the tension level is really high and I gotta pay attention to it. Next question, what was the process like with casting the kids and working with Disney on this project? I have to say that getting to know Walker and Leah and Ariane, our three main leads, our, our kids, was the best part of the whole process for me. They are stunningly talented. They are so incredible. And they're just genuinely nice kids too. So getting to know them and their families and working with them on a daily basis was a real, real treat for me. Uh, the energy on the set every day was so positive. It was like a big family that we created together. I loved that. Next question. 
Do you have a favorite episode? Well, there are eight episodes, and each one is straight from The Lightning Thief. We tell the story of that first book pretty well. Uh, favorite episode? Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to say the final episode because it has one of the most epic sword fight scenes I have ever seen on film. It's really great. Ooh, here's a, here's a good Easter egg question. Will we see a reference or something of Nico and Bianca D'Angelo in the Lotus Casino scene? There, if you pay attention really carefully, you might get a hint that they are around. The problem with that is if we had cast Nico or Bianca for this season, by the time we were ready to film them in what would hypothetically be our third season, the age difference would be all out of whack. So we really couldn't do that very well. We did try to put a little mention in there though, so you can see if you catch it. And final question, will we be getting official show merch soon? Well, Disney is working on it. I can tell you that uh, we have already seen official Camp Half-Blood shirts out in the wild. I think Hot Topic had some for a while, and I'm sure there will be more opportunities to get them. What else might be in the works? I'm not sure yet, but um, we're letting them know that that is something that you're interested in, so I hope so. Thanks, everybody. Just as a reminder, you can watch Percy Jackson and the Olympians on Disney+. Plus.